By the end of this video, you will have learned how to create your own custom blocks that you can then reuse over and over again in various projects. For example, Snap doesn't have a built-in draw square block, but using the techniques you're going to learn in this video, you'll be able to create your own by the end. Just like this one. So when I click on draw square, it draws a square. And for those of you wondering, yes, that sprite is my face. I want to stop and just take a moment and talk about the reporter block in Snap. In most other programming languages, they're not called reporter blocks, they're called functions. And functions, in most other languages, return some kind of value. In Snap, they report a value, but it means the exact same thing. The AP exam is going to use the word procedure to talk about reporters and other blocks called command blocks. In Snap, command blocks are blocks that you can attach to other blocks. And command blocks, as the name kind of describes, command the computer to do something specific. So usually you use reporter blocks inside of command blocks. You could also use reporter blocks inside of other reporter blocks. But the AP exam will use procedure for both. We're going to continue our gossip project and create a gossip response reporter block. To make your own block, you can right click anywhere in the scripting area and then left click on make a block. You can also go into the variables palette to find the make a block button, but you're going to have to scroll down just a little bit and then click it. Either way works fine. You want to choose the name and color of your block wisely. If your block will cause a sprite to move, it makes sense to use the blue color for motion. If your block is going to use a list, choosing red makes sense, where it says lists. If your block is doing a whole bunch of mathematical operations, then it makes sense to use the light green for operators. You'll be able to find your block in the appropriate palette once you're done making it. When naming your block, be very descriptive. If your block will cause a sprite to draw a square, don't name it happy block. You should name it draw a square. No one will know what it's supposed to do if you use some kind of obscure name. For Unit 1, Lab 2, Page 3, we want to create our own block that we're going to call Gossip Response. We're going to choose the oval reporter shape because this block is going to report a value. Don't worry, with more practice, you're going to know exactly which block shape to use, whether you should use Command, Reporter, or Predicate. For now, we want our reporter to return a value or report a value, so that's why we're choosing Reporter. Because our gossip response is going to work with lists, it makes sense to use the red list button. I said it red, but it kind of looks like red orange. Or maybe it's a dark orange. Now let's name our block gossip response. When you hit OK, the block editor window comes up. The block editor allows you to define the exact steps the computer will take when gossip response is activated. Just a reminder, there is no gossip response block built into Snap. We're creating it from scratch here. Now here comes the fun part. We want to create some phrases for responding to gossip. And we want to store all of these phrases in some kind of block that can store multiple items. Now to do that, we're going to store it inside of a list that's found inside of the variables palette. And we can add more items to this list by clicking on this little black arrow pointing to the right. So for example, let's say someone gossips, we might respond with, no way. Or we might respond with, don't tell me that, dot, dot, dot. Or maybe, I can't believe that, dot, dot, dot. And finally, let's just throw in a, you don't say. Now that we've created all the phrases we want to respond to gossip with, we have to be able to choose one of these phrases at random. And to do that, we can use the item random of block. So that is going to be this block over here on the left. Right now it says item one of blank. So if I drag it over, you'll see that it has a little drop down menu and we can choose a random value of, and in this input, we see these two little orange lines. That signifies that this block expects a list as an input. So let's put this list inside of there. And now this item random of block is going to choose an item randomly and respond with it from this list of phrases. 
in order for our gossip response block to respond to the message, we're going to put all of this code inside of the report block. If we hit apply and then OK, our block will have been created and now we can find it at the bottom of variables and it's called gossip response. So I'm going to drag it onto my scripting area and I'm going to click it a few times and it says you don't say, you don't say, I can't believe that, no way, I can't believe that, don't tell me that. And those are just a few responses that we're going to respond to gossip with initially. If you're noticing that your block isn't working correctly, make sure to debug it by right clicking on it, going down to edit and seeing what's going on inside of the block editor. It's possible that you forgot to apply and or hit OK when you created the block. Now in the instructions in number five, it says to use the new block that we've just created. We want to edit gossip to and insert gossip response in place of the text, oh, but. So we want to go to sprite two and we want to see what's inside gossip two and see how that works. So when I right click on it and edit it, the block editor comes up. And the way that gossip two currently works is that it joins oh, but, and then it takes the response or the value from who to, from does what, and from who, which are all created randomly, and it puts them all together. But instead of saying oh, but every single time, we want our gossip response to come up with a new intro. Now there may be times when it says the exact same thing in the beginning, but that's just due to randomness. So let me drag the gossip response over from our variables palette. And there, my gossip two is ready to be saved and created. So I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And now when I click gossip two, it says no way nobody ran away from Miss C. Now I'm noticing that no way doesn't have a space right after it or a period. So I want to edit my gossip response block. So this is a form of debugging. I see that something doesn't work exactly how I'm thinking it should. So I'm going to go into the block and I'm going to edit its definition. And after no way, I'm just going to add a space, which you can see as a tiny little dot. In fact, I'm going to add a space after all of these. Once I'm done, I'm going to hit apply, hit OK. And now my gossip too should look perfect. You don't say Gabrielle helped Hannah. No way Malik loves my cat. Don't tell me that Gabrielle listened to Miss C. So all of these phrases are now different instead of saying, oh, but every single time. And now the last thing I want to do is test and debug my entire program by clicking on D several times. In order to do that, I got to go back to the first sprite, the gray sprite, and I'm going to click on D, which is the say block with gossip and broadcast your turn. So I'm going to click it and it looks like it's working perfectly. I'm going to click it one more time. And it looks like it's taking phrases from my gossip response randomly. That should do it for page three. Let's finish unit one lab two in the next video. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below.